What is going on guys, Is actually here, welcome back to another Wolves video. Today I'm going to be talking about the game between Wolves and Bournemouth at Molyneux, the first game back at Molyneux, obviously in front of no crowd, it's it's a strange, it's a str strange time at the moment obviously, but it was, it was good. I wouldn't say it was impressive, I think personally the game at the weekend, the 2-0 win over West Ham was... Overall, a more enjoyable experience as a whole. More, it's more. It was more entertaining. But it's not all. It's not gonna be all. It's it's not gonna be played through rose tinted spectacles every single game. It was a good game, and it was a, an important three points at the end of the day. And Bournemouth, they're really struggling down there. They're really fighting for survival. They've. They've they've been a mainstay Premier League team for the for the past few years now, but like with Wigan, like with Hull, although they didn't stay as long in the Premier League, those smaller teams they don't usually that well all all good times must come to an end for those teams eventually. And unfortunately, if if I was going to do it from a Bournemouth perspective, I w I would be worried. I would be worried for them because they they, they played well in the first half. That that. They had all, all game really. They had quite a solid defence, but I mean, when you're fighting for survival, you you need to put in more fight than that. But I mean, I'm not a Bournemouth fan, so I don't really. I'm I'm not really f feeling the pain, but I, I'm I'm worried for them because I've had a sp soft spot for Bournemouth because they've they've they're a team that's not really. Ex expected to do well. They've had a couple of decent seasons in the Premier League since they came in in 2015-16 and they've been quite an enjoyable team to watch when as I've said in previous I've said in I've said before teams like Bournemouth and Leicester when Wolves aren't playing I, I just sit I find it easy to sit down and watch them because they play some good football and they definitely did play some good football in this game I did I have to give them that and they get they did give us not not attacking wise, they didn't give us a run for our money attacking wise really, but defensively they really annoyed us defensively and I mean it was it was similar to West Ham at the weekend where we couldn't really open them up in the first half. It was an, it was quite an even game and it there weren't there were chances were at a premium and we couldn't really open them up as we would have wanted and credit to Bournemouth credit to Bournemouth they they played uh, quite a good defensive shape and they really frustrated us for the first half but the second half that's probably it's probably why they're struggling so much this season is because they've got quite a few experienced players in there but they haven't really got the Giamatino quality where they're experienced uh, they're, they're older than, than than some of the players in in that team, but they're they're experienced and they have that physical condition to to keep on going and keep keep that shape. But they don't. Ha unfortunately, they're Bournemouth, and well, unfortunately for them, they don't have that kind of Jean Martinho quality player in that in their team who has that experience, but also has the the ph physical uh, endurance to to keep up with, with the pace of the game. And we definitely cranked it up in the second half, and Traore, it was a bit disappointing in the first half. Bournemouth, they found, they found him out. They've, 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 clearly, they've clearly done their homework on Adama Traore, and they know he likes to get, a, get out at those full-backs. And they got out sharply to him in the first half, but in the second half, as I say, um, a few experienced figureheads, but... They haven't got the endurance, and they started to wear in the second half. And Adam Traore could exploit them a lot more, and he did. An hour in, hit uh, pr pretty much a carbon copy, really, of of the goal Jimenez scored against West Ham. Cross into the box, a brilliant cross from Traore. Pretty much, a t <laughs> it was a trademark cross from Traore. You know, it's 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 a, a a style of cross we've seen so many times this season. Where, well, this time he didn't quite get to the byline. But it's it's kind of a similar cross we've seen so far this season with Trent Ray. Kind of, oh, not quite chips it, but kind of like dink, dinks it into the box. And there it was, a carbon copy of the goal against West Ham. Jimenez at the far post to head home. It's We haven't really seen Jimenez 
re- um, score score headed goals this season. I don't think. I mean, he scored his first goal for the club against Everton. Uh, that was that, that that was a header, and well, I think uh, he's he's starting to become more. I wouldn't say really Al- Alan Shearer type. He, I guess Alan Shearer. Well, Alan Shearer in his days scored a lot of headers, and Steve Ball definitely did as well. Yeah, he's he's post lockdown. He's he's definitely he, he's definitely been uh, been the type for scoring a few headers, and he, he's he's scored two goals from headed chances, and he's got 15 goals this season now in the Premier League, and obviously he's he's broken the record for the all-time Wolves goal scorer in the Premier League with 15 goals, and he's just brilliant, isn't he? <laughs> he's <laughs> Raul Jimenez is just on fire, and he's dare I say he's he, he's even better than he was <laughs> before the lockdown, and we're on we're on. We're on a really good note at the moment. We're on really good form. The team is really clicking. And as I said in the West Ham video, I was slightly concerned after the first part of performance on, on Saturday against West Ham. We we looked a little bit rusty. We, we struggled to get into the flow of the game and create our usual tempo as, as we usually have done this season. And that counter-attacking style, but I think we're we're start we're starting to ease into it now. I would say we're starting to ease into it, and we've scored three. We've scored three in our two games so far. I mean that that one uh, one nil scoreline usually represents a quite a scrappy game, not really many chances. And if you look at the first half highlights, you probably would be correct. But I mean we really did deserve that. And sometimes when you when you when you're doing well and you come up against a team like Bournemouth, no disrespect to them, they they're, they're a good quality side. They play some good football, but you know it's it's kind of stereotypical with those teams down the bottom. You know, West Ham, Bournemouth, Norwich. They they're quite they, they like to get at you defensively, really, and they 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 quite like to sit in and. Especially when you, when you go a goal up as well, they don't they, they want to try and it's kind of all, all about damage limitation for them. And well, <laughs> I just have to I just have to talk about the chance right at the end. It was it was quite. I mean, it's three points at the end of the day. It's three points, and it's it's a good result. I'm really happy with it, and we continue our our good run of performances since the return of the Premier League. But it's quite disappointing that we couldn't score more in this game because I felt like, especially in the second half, we had a, not not exactly clear cut, but we had a couple of half chances to really like put the game to bed, and there was one, I believe it was from a corner, um, it was from a corner, and it was a brilliant save by the the, the Bournemouth keeper Aaron Ramsdale, and he's really. He's really been impressive. I was really impressed with him. As as, as an opposition man in the match, I would have to give it to Aaron Ramsdale. He really kept Bournemouth in the game. He made he made a couple of brilliant saves for them. And without him, we we would have I reckon we would have been out of sight. But he made some top, he made some top class saves and a, um, probably the shining lights out of a, a struggling Bournemouth side at the moment. And he made a good save. He good made a good save do, low to the ground, but I have to talk about that Neto chance right at the end. It really should have been two 0 in the game. Still in the se- in the second half, there were still limited chances that Bournemouth still, even though the game was opening up a little bit more, Bournemouth was still relatively compact. And I have to say, fair play to them. They they did they did play a good defensive game. And when you go. When you're a team like Bournemouth who are struggling at the moment, and you and you're a goal down, it's all obviously it's all about damage limitation, damage limitation, and they did that very well. But it very easily could have been two 0 Neto right at the end, absolutely steamrolled past the whole Bournemouth defence. He was clean one on one with Aaron Ramsdale, and he blew the chance to make it two 0 which was disappointing. But we have to. We all make mistakes from uh, now and again, and Pedro and so, well, it's just typical, isn't it? You score, you score a beauty in one game, and the next, 
you miss a sitter. But we got the three points in the end, so it didn't really matter. It would have been worse, obviously, if the game was at nil-nil. It was right at the end. But we were already one up thanks to Raul Jimenez and the Dara Traore combining. So it didn't really matter in the end. And now we go to a massive, massive game at the weekend against Aston Villa. Away from home, they've really been struggling. I mean, we've got, we've got, we've got, still got to play some struggling teams. We've got Arsenal coming up in a couple of weeks. They're struggling at the moment. They've just lost to Brighton, and they've got Southampton up tomorrow. So they're struggling at the moment. We've got a couple of, we've got a couple of good games now. A couple of good fixtures. We've got Villa, who have snatched <laughs> a draw at Newcastle. Jammy, aren't they? But <laughs> we've got to win there. You got to feel. We've beaten Bournemouth now. We've we've beaten two two sides that are really relegation threat and really in trouble at the moment. And now we move on to another one, a hat trick. Can we make it a hat trick of wins against teams who are in and around or even in the bottom three at the moment? We'll have to wait and see. I hope you have enjoyed. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, and I shall see you on Saturday with my thoughts on the Villa game and hopefully another three points hopefully as I say a hat trick over relegation threatened sides until then goodbye guys